gentlemen, we are Us Talk! We have something special for you today. We have a guest. He is a chef, and he is one of the best chefs, I want to say, out here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Chef Larissa! So before we get started, it's brunch, right? It is brunch. So what's brunch without? Mimosas. Okay. Oh my gosh. So we have uh, Charles, our general manager here. Aww. This is super sweet and cute. Look at this. Awesome. It we looks delicious. Signature cocktail, our breakfast girl. It is and what is it great. called, you say? Breakfast, breakfast girl. girl. So yeah, like breakfast, breakfast boy, boys. they got the breakfast, breakfast girl. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking about it the ladies. is yes. our grape goose essences, watermelon and basil, mm. uh, martini and rossi, prosecco mm. rosé, splash pineapple, mm. beautiful strawberries for beautiful ladies on top. Oh, oh thank, you. thank you. And you did this. I did that. Mm. Okay, <laughs> I love you it. You did that. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's cheers. see. Cheers. 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 cheers to Chef Lorenzo and Breakfast Boys right here in College Park. Main Street College Park. Yummy. Okay, let's taste. What is it? Well, let's see. Let's see. Mm. Hold up. I can do this. It's the ultimate mimosa. Mm-hmm. Very this fresh. Very, very good. Very yes. refreshing. And, and it got the bite. It's it got, got some strength to it. Right, right, right. I don't know if I can make it through the show. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> right there. It's right here. Okay. Okay, good care. It's right here. You recommend it. Definitely recommend it. This is definitely something I would eat with my breakfast. So, yes. speaking mm-hmm. of breakfast. So, what brought Breakfast Boys about? Like, how did you come up with the idea? Well, I won't get into the long story. I'll give you the short version of, of the long story. Um, if people know me, they know that I've kind of been uh, a part of the Atlanta brunch scene since Justin's. If everybody remembers P. Diddy's restaurant. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, wow. We used to do the big brunches, old school buffets with the fried chicken and the collard greens and all you drink mimosas here in Atlanta. Okay. Right okay. on Peachtree Street. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. So we started back then with brunch, and then I've just kind of been part of the progression up to now where we're doing it uh, more innovative, more egg dishes, more what we call a la carte dishes, not so much of the buffets anymore. Brunch cocktails, not the standard, all you can drink mimosas. Now we can create it with our partnerships with Grey Goose and we do Prosecco, not champagne. So it's an elevated brunch experience. That's what we're going for with Breakfast Boys. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. nice. Yeah. Me and Danny over here like, hang on, bunch. It's like the like Cadillac of brunches. Like, I guess it's the easiest way to think about it. I like the Cadillac, so yeah. All right. <laughs> the new Cadillac. Mm-hmm. What did you know was a Cadillac? Yeah. yeah. So, like Chef, Chef Lorenzo, where did the name Breakfast Boys come from? So it's a crazy story. The original name, I can't remember what the original name was again. But uh, me and my partners, G and Juan, we started a group text. So uh, the group text was called the Breakfast Boys because we're all, you know, a gang. And uh, we were going back and forth about the restaurant and the lease and all the business. And when it came to sign the lease, the, the restaurant name that I originally had planned was on the lease. And my partner, G, was like, what's that? I was like, that's the name of the restaurant we've been working on. He was like, I thought it was called the Breakfast Boys. So I was like, you know what? That goes. It makes sense. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and so ever since then, and that was kind of like the beginning of the name, which was the end of the deal, the, re- the, the business deal, the beginning of the business. We started with the Breakfast Boys, so that's how it worked out. So I'm one third of the Breakfast Boys. My partner, G and Juan, um, they're, my, they're the, the other two Breakfast Boys. Gotcha. And we round out the partnership. I was just going to ask that actually, like, do they get a cut since they was a part of the group? Too? Yeah, 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 they're definitely, they're, they're my partners all in. Gotcha. Um, um, they own Virgil's uh, Gullah oh, uh, Kitchen okay. up the street here in Main Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. they're really smart, really switched on. Um, they bring a lot of the business acumen to it, and I kind of bring the brawn, which is operations and the culinary side. And me and my crew, we just run the day to day. And then Gioan, they. Um, they kind of help mastermind a lot of things behind the scenes, and then we execute as a business together as a team. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. So what made you want to become a chef? Oh, wow. Well, my dad said I like to eat, 
So he said, you gonna go to cooking school. That was, that was my career. I wish he said I like to argue, I'd be a lawyer. Yeah. So um, he, uh, st that's kind of how it started out. So I went to school for hospitality in New York. Mm. And everybody knows about, anything about New York, it's the center of the world yes, when it, it comes is. to hospitality. Yes. So all my professors had restaurants in the Hamptons and the Queens and New York. And they were just like these up the gut, like kind of like, the old school mafia kind of like movies, it's, 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 but they were in the restaurant business. So I kind of learned the street style of restaurants. Mm -hmm. Like they would say, um, dig through the trash can. Like they, they would put on like dirty clothes one day and just go dig through the trash can and just do weird stuff to kind of understand like what was going on in their business. So I kind of took that approach to the business. So I started out, you know, real organic in that way, just working like every position, learning every part of the business, right. and then going on to manage other restaurants and then start my own restaurants. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. very, very nice. Yeah. Really nice. That yeah. is so cool. So did you always want to be a chef? Was, was that something that you were inspired to do? Well you, well, you did say that your dad told you that, but is that something Your that passion. you found uh, a passion for, a love for? You know what, I'm an operator and chef. An operator would be kind of like a like the person who runs and develops restaurants. But what I found in Atlanta, no one's really doing the food the way I see it. And this has been for a few years. And then I, you know, I've been doing restaurants around the world in Dubai and Miami and New York, obviously. That was my next question. Like, what was your, what set you apart from the other restaurants? So I think what I call my food is big city country, mm -hmm. where we do southern food, but we do it, we do it in a way that you feel like you're in a big city. Mm -hmm. So I guess when you, when you, I mean, you see it kind of when you go to New York. There's an energy about the restaurant. There's an energy about the plate up. There's an energy about the food. That, I kind of bring that style like diverse, into the yeah. with diversity, but also just I, I guess it's you got to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to New York and you're in the middle of Manhattan and you go to a restaurant, you know you're in a restaurant in New York. It's something yeah. about just the way the restaurant moves and breathes and the, the plate and the ingredients and how they plate it up. Well, I'm originally from Brooklyn, so I really so you know, like, yes, I definitely yeah. can. It's nothing like. Yeah. Being in New York and the restaurants, the food is so amazing out there. It's yeah. like, yeah. You go to Peter Luger's, it's oh, going to yeah. be a sizzling plate with the steak and the chop. And we actually have a dish we're going to make today, which is going to be our steak and eggs. Ooh. It is very much in the vein of a Peter Luger. We want okay. you to just, when the steak hits the table, just wow. You yeah. can't wait to dig into yeah. it. Great oh, to I'm share. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So I love it. Nice. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a break because as Chef Lorenzo just told you, we're about to cook up some steak and eggs. We'll see you back in a minute. meal what do we have today well you prepared <laughs> our coffee room steak and eggs 
So we're about to eat. Get into it. I can't wait because I mean, he said it was about to be buttery, yes. tender. The wait, no, he said this is the mouth. best steak we've ever tasted oh. in our lives. In our, in our lives. lives. That's, That's it. My I'm we're gonna put it to the test, you guys. That's a nice little, that's like a little medium, little so, pink yeah. in there. Just a little pink. Isn't that tender? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. So the coffee rub mm -hmm. definitely adds to that flavor, that deep flavor that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't get this at home. No. How he was saying you can't have it. This is not mm -hmm. an at home flavor. You can try. Mm -hmm. But then when you're done, come to breakfast, boys, and get the real version. This is good. Yes. Mm -hmm. I usually have my coffee on the side. Mm. But now, <laughs> you can put it in the food. Yeah, I didn't even yeah, think about that. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah. So we, we paired it with some fruit, and I always suggest that at home if you're doing brunch at home. Keep it fresh. Everybody wants fruit and salad and green things. I mean, we love our shrimp and grits, mm -hmm. which is the heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we want to go out later on after brunch and do more things. And so bring in your fruit, bring in your fresh herbs, bring in your salads. I mean, have fun. Do three, three or four salads for your brunches. <laughs> Let me see what Danny did with this egg. I like Danny's egg. That flip took it to a whole other level. That flip was a professional a flip. Yeah. You looking for a job? I'm looking for <laughs> chefs. I don't know hey. about risk in my He's hiring. I don't know if I can take it. I don't know if I can take it. I'm a, okay, Danny. I did all right with the fried egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Danny. We did all right. Yolk on it. We got a little yolk on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is a together. Yes. Oh, you yeah. got a little bit of the coffee rub on that piece. I do. Uh, mm -hmm. I do. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to this nice. steak real quick. <laughs> We're eating on Us Talk right now, guys. So and when I tell it's you, it's really, really good. Y'all need to come on over to Breakfast Boys because mm. this steak is definitely lit. Mm -hmm. And the eggs go very good with it. You like mm -hmm. it? You mm -hmm. just top it up with the little sauce. Very classic good. dish. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's reasonable, too. I mean, that was the other thing about breakfast. Um, boys, we wanted to make brunch approachable. Um, a lot of restaurants now that are doing brunch in Atlanta, they're making it so exorbitant. And I love the luxuriousness of it, mm -hmm. but you can't do that every week. Sometimes you got you got to fit it into your world. Yeah. So this is a brunch that you can do that feels decadent with mm -hmm. steak and eggs, but it's very approachable. Mm -hmm. So you can do it every week. You know, you get together, come on a date, mm -hmm. come back for lunch. Maybe, you know, if you just have a, a weird day, you just want to get away from everybody. Find a space in the corner somewhere and sit down, have your little cocktail. Mm -hmm. so I feel like we got the best of the best already at Breakfast Place, right? Mm -hmm. But there are times where things are not smooth and easy and decadent and coffee mm -hmm. covered and all that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How do you handle stress in the restaurant, stress in the kitchen, stress with your employees? Because, I mean, let's be real. It happens, right? Right. We don't let the customers show it, but or we don't show it to the customers. But how do you handle it? I mean, you're the boss, so... Yeah, I think we just have to, we, we have a, our, what we call our North Star. And as long as we're headed towards that North Star, we don't get thrown off. I mean, it'd be just like if we were on the ocean, we can't control nature. We can't control what's going to happen on that ocean, but as long as we know where the destination is. And so Absolutely. that's our thing. We have a great team. We take our time. I, there's a philosophy that I learned a long time ago in business is hire slow and fire fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that works for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I take my time to get to know people. I hire people that I've known for a long time. I understand their strengths and their weaknesses. And then if I meet people for the first time or I'm interviewing and they get started, I make a quick decision whether it's not going to work. Mm. And I think that kind of, when you're in those bumps uh, along the way, it allows you to make great decisions because you know kind of like what your default decisions are. If it's not working, let's end it. And if there's people that you believe in, keep believing in them. And we know where our ultimate goal is, so everybody just keeps pushing towards that. You Absolutely. hear that, Danny? He was yeah. trying to hire you. He's going to try to fire you, too. I know, oh, right? We'll see. I, I heard that. 15 I minutes, I'm going to know. <laughs> but I like what I see so far. That first step so, yeah, got me you, in there. You have a future here. <laughs> okay. Whenever you're ready. This, this is all over. You talk about Let's see what us talk does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can't have it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's needed in the mornings. You can have it after 3 o'clock. <laughs> So, Weekends are all mine too. Listen, <laughs> Sunday. What you doing on Sunday? Y'all trying to overwork me already. Oh. <laughs> Making breakfast with my husband. I'm gonna mm. take those. <laughs> she's stealing your recipe. <laughs> well, she's still working. You still working for Breakfast Boys, and you cooking our food. 
<laughs> but that's okay. All right. <laughs> so speaking culinary, speaking cooking, right? How do you feel about in the culinary world? People have now brought it more into the black community in a restaurant aspect, right? So right. what would you say is the pinnacle of this culinary lifestyle in the black community? Because, I mean, food is culture in the black community, right? But I feel like it's more in the restaurant now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I understand what you're saying. So, I'm sorry. You went to culinary art school, right? And cooking was big in your childhood, or no? Um, not much, no. Okay, so with that not being a part of your childhood, but I mean, in th there is cooking and food in the black culture. Mm -hmm. How do you feel now that you are in the business? I know you do more of the backside of the business, but how do you feel now in the business, in the restaurant aspect of it, but kind of coupling the black culture together with? Now oh, yeah, today. yeah. Food, food is always going to tell a story of culture. If you think about pizza and you, mm -hmm. how that started, you think about Chinese food, how it started. You think about fusion food, Jamaican food. Jamaican is representative of many cultures. It's mm -hmm. Asian. There's uh, German influences. There's obviously Indian influence with curries. So I think that food's always going to tell a story. And I think that uniquely from how you grow up, like I remember going down south. When I was in New York, eating that pork chop off the top of the stove <laughs> and fall in love. That's yeah. what I mean when yes. you're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that definitely is, the, is part of my story. Um, you know, we, we, we experience things when we're younger around food and, and hopefully it inspires us as we get older to when we create food. But just bringing it more so back into the, because we're in College Park. Right. And we're in an area where we're trying to kind of take it back. Right. So, when you are you getting a lot of, um, let's say, people supporting in the black community, yeah, yeah. and with it being food that, like you said, you kind of couple in the the country food, but with like the city vibe and feel. Mm -hmm. I think that's more so what I'm trying to bring to the forefront. Yeah. So I, I think ever since the protests, supporting black business has been a thing. Mm -hmm. um, you look on Yelp and other business platforms are they're they're actually promoting everyone to support black owned businesses so we've definitely seen that wave um and i think that a black restaurant is kind of the easiest it's the lowest hanging fruit because people are like oh i'm hungry i'll go to this place and mm. i'll eat and i happen to support black business so yeah we're definitely on the cutting edge of that because we're popular people think that we're good we have five star reviews across every medium so if you're going to support a black business, you want to support something that you're really going to enjoy. Support. Yeah. Breakfast boys. Support yeah. is a verb. It's very good. Yes. Very, very good. Very yes. good. Yes. Tasty. Thank you. So what do you see? Breakfast boys or Virgil's or Chef Lorenzo within five to ten years? Are we bringing more restaurants to the area? Are we taking it international? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm more, I mean, I've had a long career. Um, this is like the third iteration of my career. So for me, I, I at this point in my in my business career, I, I like to really stay focused. I think it's really easy to get. When you're younger, you see every opportunity and you're, you think that everything's available to you, which it may or may not be. But I think as you get older, you get a little more aware of what your limitations are. So for me, it's just focus on what we do here right now. I think right now, in the current climate, everyone wants to do everything. Mm -hmm. I love going to places, whether it be restaurants or a good dry cleaner, where they're very, very good at what they do. Mm -hmm. If I give you my clothes and they come back, the Wait, best dry cleaner I've ever had. And that growing up in New York, you do have a I lot of that. I was just about to say, this sounds like New York. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm look, I, I love to see us get back to that as Americans, as current culture. culture. culture yeah. I would love people to get back to being great craftsmen, great artisans, people that are really like go deep. Because you'll meet someone and say, oh, I, I, I'm a florist. And you go and they don't know anything about flowers. They don't know anything about the history of horticulture. They don't know anything about water and sun and and the grass and the gravel mm. it's like oh so you just want to be cute for instagram uh, people just so, do things and now you look good and you got your hat on and so for me i just want to see as to get back to um authenticity mm. so as that relates to my career hopefully i can inspire other people people would love to see me oh yeah i'm gonna open 30 more restaurants i've done that in my career 
But right now, I really want to focus on doing one restaurant really, really well. Mm. And when you come in, you get the best steak or the best egg or the best strawberry, the best mango, the best service, the best ambiance. And to me, that's, I'm good. So instead of having 10 breakfast boys, you're saying in 10 years, I still want to have breakfast boys standing and I still want it to be the best restaurant because we do see restaurants come and go. We do see businesses mm -hmm. come and go because Absolutely. they didn't focus on that business and like strengthen it to its best ability for longevity. So I can respect that. Well, I'm gonna build it for both. And if the opportunity allows us to scale, then what we call scaling the business, we will. Expand. Um, yeah, but that's gonna depend on great people. Um, resources, which are in abundance, we can, we can get resources Absolutely. together. I'm a New York, I can hustle, I can, hey. I'll go get to the money. <laughs> um, but really it's about our people. It's about just finding high quality people who are committed to hospitality and delivering great food and great service and great drinks. Um, we have an amazing design team, so that's the easy part too. Nice. Um, but so to answer your question, will there be 10 or 20 breakfast boys will depend on the people in the building. So you guys hear that if you come and he hires you within 15 minutes if you don't flip an egg the way he wants you to flip the egg like Danny that did. that's the door it's over with Out the door. <laughs> awesome so if you're talking about the people did you get affected with your people during covid um and during covid i was actually doing consulting in the restaurant space um, it was very complicated because the, the government made everyone stop working. Mm. So it was almost like you weren't supposed to work. Um, but I'm a hustler. I'm a New Yorker. I, I like to, I, I can't sit down for eight months and do nothing. That no. right. It'll take something out of my soul. Mm -hmm. So we built, we built restaurants during that time frame. We were contractors and designers and we did what we could do. And then when COVID lifted, Atlanta kind of kind of skated around COVID a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when, when COVID lifted, when we were, we were open in this city and everyone was coming here already from New York and Miami and LA. So when it lifted kind of nationwide, we got even busier. So um, we work, we've been working straight through. Okay. Yeah, but you know, being safe and social distancing and wearing our masks. Mm -hmm. So excuse my ignorance with the word iteration. Mm -hmm. You said this was your third Iteration. Career or, iteration. Uh, right. As, what, what, what do you mean by that? So, I mean, I'm 42. So, what? what? Well, I started out. <laughs> you definitely I, didn't rub me as 42. No. Oh, uh, well, I started out, I started out probably at 15. Mm -hmm. So, 15 to 25 was one restaurant career for me. Okay. And I was working for everybody else from 25 to about 35. I had my own restaurants. And from about 35 to up to about this year, I've been consulting behind the scenes, helping build. Pretty much the entire, yeah, the entire brunch industry in Atlanta and mm -hmm. New York and work with Cafe Roval in Miami. Uh, we launched PJ Clark's Brunch up in New York City on, on the Hudson. Worked with Breakfast at Barney's here. Worked with um, Gaucher's Breakfast Bar here. Um, and a few other restaurants. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, different versions of the same career. Gotcha. And now we're back at this point where we're... Yeah. You know, in the third iteration, building things. Yeah. <laughs> so, in between those iterations, yeah. what kept you motivated to get to go to the second one, to go to the third one? How did you? Um, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I probably need a drink. <laughs> that's a whole nother story, right? <laughs> and a whole nother interview. But um, let me get a strawberry on that. Yeah, I mean, business is tough, man. Like, I grew up in a different time for business where uh, people failed a lot, people experimented a lot. Now there's so much information. I mean, when I was building a business, you couldn't Google how to start an LLC and get credit and these things. There weren't even books you could find on it. Yeah. So you just literally had to just go out and put a couple of dollars together, put a credit card up and fail, and then do it again and fail. And in fact, I had 12 businesses before my first business um, made a million dollars. And I was married at the time, and my wife was like, you and your harebrained schemes, you and your business ideas. And then a year later, we made our first million. And then she's like, he's a genius. <laughs> I knew he could do it. it. Sounds like a wife. <laughs> he's amazing. So um, it, it was, it, it was, it's a lot easier now to build a business. I mean, we get into like out of restaurants now, kind of into the, the general business world with digital economy, with the gig economy, with with the platforms out there, you can build a business that can create pretty good revenue 
I come from a time where you didn't have all that. You had to, I mean, a restaurant was- That's a hustle. Yeah, it mm -hmm. and it was very expensive. So um, I hope that helps answer the question. <laughs> like, I don't know where I'm going with the question, but yeah, like uh, now it's a lot more um, effective. Even with social media, like restaurants, we grow so fast now. Okay. Back in the day, it took, you had to know somebody, a celebrity would come in, or you know, you walk in and all the pictures would be on the wall. Yeah. That's how you would drive business. Now, you can have a good Instagram, good social media manager. Good make pictures. Beautiful plates, beautiful <laughs> pictures, beautiful videos, and, and people want to come and see and check There's it out. There's still a science to that social media thing, though. Like, you just can't, okay, have a page. Like, you got to run that thing. Yes. Like, and run it. I mean, like, there's a whole science behind social media now. So there's well, still hard work, but it is definitely different. I well, we, we hire social media specialists and stuff, and I have to put them on, let them know. The original Instagram post is a plate of food. Mm -hmm. So I told them we need to post 16 to 20 times a day, mm -hmm. which goes against all, like, training of social media you're supposed to post at nine o'clock when people wake up at 12 o'clock at, oh, yeah. at night when they're looking at through their phone but i had to train my our media team that the, the restaurant is the unique positioning in all the social media we built social media if it wasn't for people taking pictures of their food the platform wouldn't be as big as it is so we post 16 times a day 20 times a day our our story is if you don't like as much we're posting, just unfollow us. You're not our customer. Yeah. Our customers want to see food. They don't they don't want to be thinking about us. And then when that picture of that steak comes up, they're like, Oh, I'm hungry. Let me go. Let me order Uber yeah. Eats. So it's kind of like uh, we have our own, like you say, right. our own strategies. Because mm -hmm. you got like you said, you can't just do it. You have to have some form of a, a plan to do it. Yeah. yeah. So under on social media, let's say Instagram. Okay, the caption is specialty of the day, uh, well, Sunday, specialty of the day. What would that picture be? Our specialty today? Uh, no, uh, let's just say the specialty of breakfast, boys. What is that signature dish? I think, it, you know what, I let the audience speak, and right now it looks like, <laughs> it looks like the steak and eggs for y'all. Uh -huh. But uh, the catfish, shrimp, and grits by far is a runaway. I look at the numbers and it's probably double of everything else. I just didn't know. I know people love catfish and grits. I know people love shrimp and grits. Who knew mm -hmm. if you combine them together, combine it'd be like a whole new situation. <laughs> um, so that's down. I wasn't even thinking about changing our handle to the home of the catfish, shrimp, and grits. Mm -hmm. Because like we've, been, mm -hmm. we've been really blessed. People really enjoy that dish. But it's very balanced. I mean, people, it's because really, I guess because there's other folks who, who are like, oh, there's other chefs out there who throw shots at me. And they're like, oh, that's this and this mm -hmm. and that. They We're not really. Beef going yeah, they, have chef wars. <laughs> they have shade in the culinary world. Yes, little chef do. wars, you know, you know, you know, guys like <laughs> egos and things I can and it. throwing shots. I guess it's a lot like like the rap game or even yeah. in y'all business. People feel they they don't want you to get as much attention as they get, okay. and uh, they might say, "Well, th that chef might just post like just good food." But we're an experience, so we want you to have a good meal. But we want well, we want you to have a good meal. Not just a plate. Right. So a lot of chefs right now are posting these amazing, just like dishes are popping through the camera and all their effects on it. And you want to eat the parsley. The when you go oh, there, you're like, what you, you see. Be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I definitely suggest take the filters off because people want to see the food essentially. Right. <laughs> so another shade shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <One of> them filters. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, yes. Right time. So, um, you know, it's a meal. So we, so we do want to present the food like, oh, look at our perfect, favorite, number one dish. But I really want you to come in and have fellowship. And I want you to catch up. And I want the meal to almost be like a song. I, I want it to be a rhythm in that environment. I don't want the food to be like the, we're not a takeout restaurant. We're a dine in, sit down cocktail music we have a breakfast boys radio on spotify and it's all just built to kind of like be a perfect harmony nice. okay so how could our viewers fellowship with the breakfast boys come in and eat <laughs> from eight to three seven days a week um eat at breakfastboys.com same for our instagram same for our facebook we're working on tiktok 
So come on, what I want to see that. Okay. Also, give them the address where we're located at. We're at 3387 Main Street, College Park, Georgia. We're on Main Street. Main Street, if everybody's not switched on to uh, Historic College Park, is the best kept secret. It's the biggest little city in Georgia because we're sandwiched between the city of Atlanta and the, and the world's busiest airport. So a lot of people get off their flights and they stop in and have breakfast or they're on their way to drop folks off and they have breakfast. Um, we have celebrities here. We have politicians, a lot of politicians. Pretty much everybody comes so in. Let's talk. And yeah, us talk. Us Deborah, talk. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not off the hook yet. Okay. We got a surprise for you. We got a little... Mm. A little game we're gonna play real quick. Oh, okay. <clears throat> we call this this or that. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> this or that. So you have to pick one. You can't say I'm both. Gonna sneak, I'm gonna sneak away down those stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. So, fried egg or scrambled egg? Fried egg. Oh, that was fast. Do you need to say why? I'm just gonna say that. Oh well, do you I have a think, yeah? Why? Why? Um, I think fried egg tastes more technique. I think a fried egg looks more beautiful on the plate. Mm. Um, I love that separation of the white and the yolk. I mean, it's just it's an amazing dish. Okay. Several reasons. Yeah. All right. From taste to plating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about the steaks. You like well done, medium, or rare? You know what? Depending on the steak, I'm not one of these steak snobs that say, oh, if you eat your steak well done, don't order a steak. I think that people should order the food they like to eat. I have a lot of guests who like well done steaks. I have a lot of guests who like... But well, what you like, yeah. Yeah. You, yours. What do I like? What do like? Um, if I'm eating a New York strip, I like a New York strip medium. If I do a, a fattier steak, like a ribeye, I want it a little more well done because I don't like all the fat. So it just depends on the steak that I'm eating. If it's a hamburger, I go medium well, a little bit of pig. If it's a if it's a filet mignon, very very tender, I'll sear it and go rare. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on which steak I eat. Oh, okay. And go prime, not select. Not select. Not Give select. me choice. <laughs> select choice and prime. Definitely prime is the best. Um, a Pittsburgh. Is, oh my God, have you had Pittsburgh? Mm -hmm. It's really char on the outside it's rare on the inside oh that so they like a, like fast right. cook it like on high Friday, temperature yeah it's like all gotcha. the char all the, the crust from the, the pot from mm. the skillet and all the flavor of the steak oh, inside yeah but it's super rare if you don't like bloody then that's yeah that's no thank you. you but yeah <laughs> you got one for him angel um i would say waffle or french toast Mm. That's, a good That's a good one. I like French toast. Mm. I love French toast. Too. Yeah. Why do you like French toast? The versatility. Mm. You can do so many things with French toast. I can. I mean, you can change a waffle flavor, but you can stuff French toast. Mm. You can cover it. You can stack it. It just has all these different versions of. Cause it's bread. Yeah, it's bread. <laughs> <laughs> you can use different bread. You can use brioche. Yeah. You can use French. You can use plain old white bread. I just think you have a lot more, as a chef, you have a lot more um, to play with with French toast. Mm. Last mm. one. Bacon or sausage? Mm. Mm. Bacon. Bacon. Why? Well, yes. it's, it's like you have to choose bacon. But you gotta choose bacon. I just Even though I don't eat pork, like, eat bacon. I don't choose bacon, then yeah. it's like. It just seems like a man would choose bacon anyway. Yeah. It's kind of like bacon. Like, I choose bacon. Something. What about turkey like bacon? Sausage. You like turkey bacon? It has to be a certain kind of turkey bacon. It can't be just eating turkey no bacon. Limp, no limp bacon. No, I do like crispy. crispy. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Crispy bacon is the best. <laughs> but sausage is good. And actually, we have our own breakfast sausage, mm -hmm. a chicken sausage here. Mm -hmm. A breakfast boy's chicken sausage. Yes. In supermarket soon. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Nice. Looking on that. You said, where are we going from here? We said what's coming to it. Yeah. We said what's coming to some things in the chamber. <laughs> you know, Christmas is coming up. We gotta leave some some gifts. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Chef Lorenzo it. in the building. That's We're cool. in his building. Yes, the food was so good. <laughs> oh, the food is so good. So oh, I'm actually I feel about like I'm one of the girls. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Just crunching and eating and talking. You haven't eaten yet, so we gotta <laughs> enjoy We're good. We're good. Toast to the birthday girl. Toast. Thanks again, Chef Lorenzo. Yes. We are us toast.